Well, hello everyone and welcome to Sheffield Varsity as today for this 5.30 kickoff in the beautiful uh, Yorkshire sunshine. I am Adam Hume Thomas and I am your commentator today, uh, a student from University of Sheffield and joined with me today is Carlos Fellows. Yeah, I'm excited to be here today. I'm a Hallam student. I'm hoping to see a great game. Lots of great spectators join us today. Should be great fun. Absolutely, yep. Yeah. So now both sets of teams from Sheffield Hallam and from Uni of Sheffield enter the field of play, joined by match officials. The University of Sheffield today will play in a very bright neon yellow kit with black shorts and black socks. And the Sheffield Hallam in their dark red, almost maroon possibly, colour there. And we are currently seeing them line up just in the middle of the pitch and this is it this is the big one really after the whole day today this is the first team for both of these universities try and grab a crucial vital point in the battle of varsity one thing will be certain is that there'll be great intensity we saw in the fours the threes and the twos earlier today some real atmosphere some real celebrations for winners so it should be great absolutely yeah well, we can see the number one for University of Sheffield, Finn O'Leary there in his blue goalkeeper kit, leading a little huddle there, about halfway through their, their side. And they're going to need everything they can possibly muster up for this game. The match officials today, well, they're having to dress in all black because the University of Sheffield are donning that sort of referee match official neon. And both dugouts full of subs and the coaching staff. And we've got a healthy amount of support from both universities here to watch this game unfold. I think a lot of people might have been turned off by the weather earlier in the day. Uh, but those who've stuck around will hopefully see a really interesting match here. It's brilliant weather for the game. A bit of a bite to the cold, but that's perfect footballing weather. Well, absolutely, yeah. We're going to hope that the pitch isn't too soggy or muddy. And the referee in the middle of the pitch is bringing captains over for, for both teams. And a lot of the players just greeting each other and wishing each other good luck here. And we're nearly a month into Sheffield Varsity and this is one Definitely to keep your eye on the uh, the football here. It's a very close contest again this year in the competition. And it will be, I believe, University of Sheffield to kick off. And it's just after 25 minutes to six here, and we're getting ready for kickoff. In the lovely sunshine of Sheffield, we are kicked off, and Uni of Sheffield with the ball, of course, from kickoff. And there's a bit of a tussle already there, but Hallam have won it back. And they're on the press here, playing it through, just inside the box with the number 20 for Sheffield Hallam. That's Nick Benson. It's crossed in and it's cleared away well by University of Sheffield. All the way forward now on the counter attack come Uni of Sheffield in their bright neon yellow. Still with it, but Hallam constantly applying that pressure. Hallam has started really positively here, pressing, pushing this Uni of Sheffield team back. And the number nine for Uni of Sheffield receives that long ball across. On the edge of the area now, will he look to shoot? He does. Oh, it's just gone wide. And that's a, a positive rebuttal there by University of Sheffield after a little bit of early pressure from Hallam. Well, I was worried for the Uni of Sheffield back line after they got dispossessed in the midfield. They looked a bit nervy, but they've got their confidence back. They played brilliantly through the Hallam midfield and created a great opportunity. Well, he had all the time and space in the world there to shoot, and it wasn't too far wide. 
And this goal kick will be taken by Jay Rathbone with his right foot all the way into a big tussle in the middle of the park. But Hallam have it and given away cheaply. Up forward and it's a heavy fall there from Hallam from their defender, number 77. And they've comfortably got it in their defence. I mean, they'll just want to try and find those long balls now, which they have done all the way. But it's a really poor touch there from Nick Benson, the striker. One noticeable thing is there's a big height difference between the two teams. Union of Sheffield seem to be a bit of a bigger team. You can see that in the defence. They're playing it to feet rather than over the top or to the heads of the uh, Hallam players when they're going forward. Absolutely. Well, and it's a long ball. Oh, it's a fantastic ball over there on the wing and brilliant defending all the way back to Rathbone. He's going to look to play it long, which he does all the way into the sunshined eyes of the Uni of Sheffield defence. And they're under a bit of pressure. They've got to be careful they don't give it away cheaply. There's several Hallam players looking to pounce and it's a brilliant ball played through, but straight into the arms of the goalkeeper. And there's a lot of long balls being played here early on. It's a really direct game. There was space there for Uni of Sheffield. Just a little less weight on the pass. Yeah, there absolutely. might have been opportunity. And it's pinged across to the number 29 there for, Uni or, uh, for Sheffield Hallam, sorry, Alex uh, Baino. Now Uni of Sheffield bring it forward and it's a big chopping challenge that's missed and it's played all the way forward for Hallam. But it's had to be cleared in a, in a bit of a panicked move there from Uni of Sheffield's defence, Lewis Allen. You can notice there's a clear tactic from both teams to turn both defences around, put them under pressure. In a big pressure game, that's exactly what you want to do, force them to make decisions. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we're going to get ready for this throw-in to be taken by Lewis Allen. I sort of worry for Uni of Sheffield. I mean... You wouldn't have expected it, but the, the sun is so bright on this otherwise cloudy day. And will that play any part in, you know, blinding uh, the uni offside? And it's, they, well, the defence here is urging their players to get order. And it's a low ball. And it's, they're under pressure, uni of Sheffield in the defence here. And they've got to try and get it out, which they do. It's down on the wing now. But played out for a uni of Sheffield throw in. It's been an end-to-end -end so far. Almost like a basketball game. Absolutely, yeah. No team really gaining control of the game so far, really. Ball is thrown in. The number six there flicking it forward. That's Finn Thompson in the midfield. And it's out for a Uni of Sheffield throw in. Hallam have got to be a bit more careful in possession. They seem to be a bit desperate to go forward and create chances. They've just Absolutely. got to bide their time. Well, they started off so energetic. They look a little bit like they're under the cosh now. And it's a lot of aerial battles going on there. They need to keep it on the ground, which Uni of Sheffield do, and they bring it forward on that. And... Well, the... Bright Sun sort of blind, blinding us here in the commentary area. But it is a goal kick for Jay Rathbone again. And they're going to have to utilise their time playing not in front of the sun, really. Some ironic trees from the crowd there. Yeah, Good absolutely. to see a bit of grassroots banter. Of course. And it has been given as a throw-in, I believe, there. Or is that a free kick? I think it's a free kick there, yep, for Sheffield Hallam from that pushing incident. It's a great chance to turn the uh, Uni of Sheffield defence around. They do lack a bit of height, but if you have runners at the back post and the near post, you can definitely cause some problems. Yeah, Josh Millen here to take it. This long, sweeping free kick goes to a player on the edge of the box there, but it's cheaply given away again by Sheffield Hallam, who st started so well, but they're, they're really not building on any kind of momentum. Oh, and it's a really poor touch from the defence again, and they've skimmed it out, only to be intercepted by Uni of Sheffield. You ping it across to no one, and it, the wind is, is carrying the ball to all kinds of places. They've got to master the conditions, the two teams here. It's causing the problems in the first few minutes, but they should be able to control it now. 
be aware of what's going to happen, be aware of how the wind's going to affect the game. Absolutely, yeah. It's Sheffield Hallam going to take this throw in just in front of the dugouts over there. A bit of a tussle going on. And it's fantastic. It's still skilled by Sheffield Hallam there to bring it forward. And it's, it's again, it's a panicky clearance for a throw in. And I've just been informed by a spectator that the Sheffield Hallam goalkeeper is actually Jay. Um, it's not Jay Rathbone, it's Jay uh, Rabone, I believe. Again, the pronunciation of that is probably um, the jury's still out for that one. And a throw in into the box, cleared, but it's back with Hallam. Shot on goal. Oh, what a Great fantastic effort. save. That's what they've got to do more. Force some shots, test the keeper early on, test his nerves, and he responds well there. Well, I believe it was Mackenzie Ross who took that fantastic uh, shot around 20 yards or so from the goal. He just turned and, and absolutely smashed it. It almost found itself in the top left corner, as you could see. And it was an amazing save from Finn O'Leary, the first one of the afternoon. Got to say, I think Hallam look a bit more purposeful in these first opening exchanges. They've got another chance to put in a great delivery. And the man, I believe, who took that fantastic shot is going to take this corner. It's driven in and flicked out by Uni of Sheffield, who will look to counter now. And everyone's screaming for the ball. It's pinged all the way forward, but into the hands of the goalkeeper for Sheffield Hallam. I think the right wing there was probably the better option. He was in more space. I think they had the, the privilege of too many options there, arguably. And it's won back by Uni of Sheffield almost immediately, but a challenge by Hallam finds it out for a throw in. Back with Hallam now, who looked to break. But it's going to find its way all the, back to, all the way back to the keeper, Finn O'Leary, who brings it back inside his box to collect easily and calmly. Well, you just get the sense that Sheffield Hallam's striker there, Nick Benson, is ready to pounce it at any moment. Yeah, he's got to keep making those arching runs. He's got to keep worrying that back line. Almost ready to be found at any moment. Obviously, that's impossible, but... He's got to keep doing it. He's got to make sure he's got the psychological part or psychological presence in the defender's minds. Absolutely. And here he is now, but he misses that as the defender gets it clear. And now, now back with Uni of Sheffield. But here we go. This is where I think Sheffield Hallam are going to be deadly on that counter. And it's not been given as a foul there, even though he did evidently get pushed over. But it's going to be a throw into Uni of Sheffield. Yeah, the referee looking like he's going to be running a high contact game, a high bar for fouls and free kicks, which is what you want to see. Absolutely. Sheffield Hallam needing some route one defending now. It's another meaty challenge there. Absolutely. Flick forward to that man, Benson, up front. Oh, incredibly physical player. And he's done well in keeping the ball. And it's a rather poor... Pinged the ball forward. Yeah, High. Benson's definitely going to have to do that. He's one of the more physical players on the pitch for Hallam. They're a team of quite short players. They need a focal point to bring them up the pitch. Well, I mean, he had to drop so far back then just to help Hallam keep the ball. of being sort of out-muscled in the midfield at the moment, as we've just seen there. I mean, now they're away. Uni of Sheffield. And they've broken through. And it's a tackle. And it's a penalty. A tough challenge there. And I think they're going to have to get some medical support on their field after that challenge. But it will be a penalty to Uni of Sheffield. It's a big moment. I said earlier about turning the defences around, making them make decisions. That's what happens. You can commit penalties, you can commit fouls. It's an unfortunate moment for Hallam. They've started well, but they've been punished for poor defending. Absolutely, yeah. A little bit worrying that the player is still down on the ground there. Not really what you want to see this early in the game. And But Uni of Sheffield do have a chance to open their account here. It's an amazing opportunity. And frankly, they need to take every single one they can get playing against the Sun. 
It's especially worrying to see players down for a bit of a prolonged period, especially when you work all year towards these kind of games. This will be the pinnacle for most or most uni teams to play in a varsity game. So it'd be such a shame if you had to come off. Absolutely. And we are being blinded by the sun here in the press area, but I can see the player down was actually the goalkeeper who's about to try and save this penalty. But the penalty taker for Uni off Sheffield is number 10. And that's Matt uh, Jad Jadhav. And he's going to look to take this and put Uni of Sheffield into an all-important lead. And the referee makes final checks. It's a golden opportunity here. Dispatched perfectly by University of Sheffield, and that puts them 1-0 up and a step closer to those all-important Sheffield Varsity points. Slightly against the winner play, but it was slotted coolly down. Sending the keeper the wrong way is a brilliant penalty. Well, in the final third, I think you could say that Hallam have been a little bit more efficient and a little bit more imposing. I think Uni of Sheffield's strategy of, of playing those long balls has been a little bit toothless so far. Um, but yes, you're right. I mean, absolutely against a run of play, I would argue. But it doesn't matter. It's now 1-0 to the University of Sheffield. This is where you really test the mentality of teams. How can they come back after setbacks, especially after playing so well? And it's Rio Murray over there for Sheffield Hallam. But a foul given, I think. Not quite sure. I mean, it is a very physical game so far, and that's probably the difference you'll be able to see from the second team to the first team for both of these universities. A little bit more physical. I mean, almost like a boxing match, those, those weight classes, that, that physical game. As Uni of Sheffield get us back underway with that throw, it tussles in the middle of the park, and oh, it's a very sort of uh, dangerous ball. Not cleared properly, and a long ball played out. Played too wide, and it's going to be a Sheffield Hallam throw in. You can see the Uni of captain. He's just assuring his teammates of that bad pass. He's assuring them it's OK. Unlucky, he's kind of willed them on. He knows they probably haven't played their best so far, but you don't have to play your best to win these type of games. Absolutely. And it's played over there to the deadly man up front, but he couldn't find it. Nick Benson with 11 goals and two assists in it to his name for the team. That's just how deadly he is. Hallam applying the pressure now. They just need a bit more precision in the final areas, the final pass. They're forcing Sheffield United, uh, sorry, Uni of Sheffield back, but they're not really creating any good chances. Well, we've seen just as many goals as we had in the, the previous men's football match, but oh, what a fantastic punch there by the University of Sheffield goalkeeper O'Leary. And it's so physical, this game. It's a, it's a physical battle between the two teams. And, you know, O'Leary, considering he's got the sun in his face, he's made two excellent goalkeeping decisions so far, you know, in terms of his positioning. For that, first of all, for that long shot, and then for that punch coming out for it. It's all the way back now with Hallam, as they're looking to reassert themselves. It's one again. I mean, you sort of get the feeling that sustained pressure by Hallam could easily lead to a goal. But here's Uniov bringing it forward. And it has been given Hallam's way. I think it may have been for an offside. Uniov look dangerous on the break every time they have it. Hallam have got to be, despite dominating the game, they've got to be more clinical in those forward areas, those final forward areas especially. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I would say, that from what I've seen so far, it seems like uh, Uni of Sheffield have got Benson, the striker, sort of in their sights, very much focusing on him. The captain for Uniov, pretty much man-marking him. It's a great physical battle between those two, though. Clearly the most physical players on the pitch. Well, I think Uniov really need to get their captain the, 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 that, um, in that sort of fight against Benson. There's going to be another Sheffield Hallam throw in. 
It's going to be Jack Roy, uh, not Jack Roy, sorry. It's going to be uh, Josh Millen to take this. The right back for Sheffield Hallam. The game's calmed down a little bit now, sort of seeping into nothingness almost in these last five minutes, but well, it, can, he, it can get better. Is he looking to take this long? Possibly. As a fan of League Two football, I'd call this a Wrexham style throw, although no, he's decided to take it short. That's a wasted opportunity for Hallam. They've got players forward. You've got to do better. Well, there's been a bit of a lull in the play in the last two minutes or so. That ball's gone out of play a lot of times. And there's a lot, there's a big bunch of players all winning that ball aerially. And that's better from Hallam. That physical battle commences. It's Benson with a brilliant turn of, of pace and, and skims it out to his teammate. Oh, and the, the referee's playing advantage there. But you can see the free kick. You can see though Benson, he's so important to this Hallam team. Get him on the ball more, let him drag players towards him, and then there's space for the wingers to shoot or either cross it in. Well, so far he looks like the best player on the pitch, I'd say, in terms of actual talent. I mean I mean you know he took out two or three Uni of Sheffield players there, turning and, and passing it to his to his Hallam teammate. Mackenzie Ross as well. I just want to point him out for that excellent shot before he's He's been brilliant for them so far. And it's whipped in now. Oh, and it's missed. Such a fantastic delivery first and foremost, but then and again, another opportunity wasted. It's about efficiency, really. But the number 77 for Sheffield Hallam misses a golden opportunity. It's an escape for Union of Sheffield there. They lost their markers at the back post. There were runners in. He just didn't quite sort his feet out, I don't think, and just missed the ball. Well, absolutely. And it's Finn O'Leary who's telling his team to get up the, pit, up the field, and it's a oh, really odd goalkeeper bit of distribution there. And they're trying to get it out frantically, but it, they can't, just can't get it out of there half for long enough. And it's a ball played over the top. But can he get there? It's defended by Hallam. Uni of Sheffield trying to build something here. Get some momentum going. And it's flicked spectacularly up to Benson for Hallam. Now what can he do? Well, he's looking for options now. Hallam are getting into those great positions to run in behind. They've just got to be patient. The game's not played in one half or 60 minutes. There will be time to create opportunities. Well, absolutely. But... Creating opportunities doesn't come through diagonal balls like that. No, I've talked about it earlier, about them forcing the play sometimes. A bit erratic. You can see it when the possession keeps on switching in short periods. They've just got to get a hold of the ball and create chances. Well, now Uni of Sheffield find themselves in a great position as they come forward once again. They're looking to play it and they're through in on goal. But it's been deemed offside there which is a real shame for Uni of Sheffield as they found themselves in a great position. Well, for all the praise we're giving Hallam, I think we should definitely give some praise to the Uni of forwards. They're making great runs, they're causing danger. And whilst Hallam have had most of the ball and maybe some more of the greater chances, Uni of Sheffield definitely possess a dangerous threat on the break. Absolutely. Well, I'm not sure whether it's the manager's directive that's changed it, but they've started playing those long balls sort of flat on the ground rather than lofted over the top. And... It seems to be working a little bit better for them. And it's spiked back to the Sheffield Hallam player. Man, it rolls to absolutely no one. And it's end-to-end -end stuff at the moment. The ball doesn't remain in the middle of the park for long. And that's an absolute waste from Uni of Sheffield. No other way to describe that. Yeah, Uni of Sheffield... <laughs> Quite interesting, actually. On many occasions, they've cut right through Hallam, but then on some occasions, they look really wasteful. A bit bipolar in the, in the attacking third so far. And I've just n noticed the uh, Uni of Sheffield sponsor, Steinhaus. That's, uh, that's a fantastic sponsor. Wasn't quite expecting to see them on a Uni of Sheffield football shirt. 
And they're looking for options here, and it's a great ball out to the wing, and they're looking to bring it forward. Ah, but it's a brilliant bit of interception there. That's what the wingers have got to do for Hallam, or at least the wide men. They've got to help and come narrow or go wide and follow the fullbacks to stop those balls into the front men. Absolutely, and a bit of a tussle going on there, but it's going to be a corner kick, I believe, to Uni of Sheffield. They'll be looking to extend their league, which, lead, which I mean, 1-0 at the moment seems a little undeserved. It's been very even with both teams having very good chances at goal. I mean, if you were going to put it down to an XG, I'd argue that from open play, Sheffield Hallam would have the higher XG at the moment. But that's the thing about football. It's a game of moments. You can bring all the stats you like, but what matters is the final scoreline. Absolutely, and it's bobbling around the box. They need to get it clear, which they do, Sheffield Hallam. And it's Benson running, reaching for that ball. Fantastic play. Absolutely, yeah. Sheffield Hallam on the break now, but it's been intercepted brilliantly. End-to-end -to -end stuff. They're, they're attacking, they're striving. So much time and space, shot. And a brilliant save by the Hallam goalkeeper. It's positive for Muniov. It's better. I feel like they've got to make sure they have more shots on goal. They weren't really creating much. And it's kicked forward again. A long sweeping ball. But it's found its way back with the oppos opposing goalkeeper. I mean, there's been very little tangible play in the middle of the park. It's all been aerial battles and sort of defensive long balls. Uni have it in possession. They've got to have a bit more hold of the ball, but they lose it. Absolutely. And they're on the attack now, Sheffield Hallam. They've got to make it count, and it's an unfortunate slip by Benson, who... Uh, well, a little bit of a, a, a taunt from the uh, presumably Uni of Sheffield cluster of supporters over there by the Uni of Sheffield goal. But now Uni over on the attack, trying to find those options. I mean, they're looking in the middle of the park and they found it. Oh. And it's an amazing save. Incredible goalkeeping. Absolutely fantastic. It's better for Uni of. They're just creating dangerous opportunities more now. Hallam have got to be careful. They're losing their grip on the game. And I was speaking to a, uh, the commentator for Forge Radio earlier, and he informed me that Sheffield Hallam's goalkeeper actually ap appears on the Football Manager 23 database, believe it or not. It's quite an achievement for him. I know, it's uh, a little bit of a weird stat there, but yeah, he informed me of that. And there's Sheffield... University of Sheffield corner taken and brilliantly cleared there by the Hallam goalkeeper. Played forward now and tackled, but they've been unlucky, a little bit unlucky there again, Carlos, wouldn't you say? Yeah, Hallam are just struggling now. Without the presence of Benson, they do struggle to link up the play. Well, I mean, Benson's your, uh, your target man up there, really, the one who's going to hold up play and find that, that ball, you know, that layoff. They've got a lot of quick players, Hallam, and he's the, the man who's going to try and get the ball delivered ha to them. Hallam, I've got to be wary of being over-reliant on him, though, because you can't constantly chip the ball into him. You can't constantly ask him to play out wide and for him to suck it into his feet. He's got, they've got to build a plan outside of him as well. Well, here's uh, one of the star performers so far in the middle. He's been at the engine of this Hallam team in the, in the few times that it's been in the midfield, and that's Mackenzie Ross. They are bringing it forward now. This is a golden opportunity, and it finds itself with Benson. He's looking for his first shot of the afternoon. And I think when he gets it, there's a good chance he'll end up in the back of the net. Here they come again, though. Hallam wasteful, though. Once again, it's frustrating for the Hallam manager. It must be frustrating for the other players. They just can't seem to make that final pass work. I also want to point out that you know, Sheffield have set up here with a very deep defensive line. They're not in any rush to push forward. I mean, as much as uh, Finn O'Leary, the Uni of Sheffield goalkeeper, wants to get them forward, in which he's telling them to do so now, they've, I've been very surprised at how deep those defenders have been playing. Well, with the game being so aerially dominated and it being sort of centric on a direct play. Oh, they're through on goal here. 
and it's a goal. It's a fantastic goal for University of Sheffield. And he, he taunts the crowd there, the University of Sheffield player. And they're celebrating here as they extend their lead to two. And again, it's a, such a bizarre goal. Sort of came out of absolutely nowhere. And I mean, for me, I'd argue now, the way things are going, the, my player of the match has been the Uni of Sheffield goalkeeper. He's been absolutely brilliant. He was telling his teams to get upfield there, and he clearly had a vision of what he thought could happen, and it happened. Yeah, the Uni of Sheffield faithful are in great noise now. And I've got to say, I talked earlier about moments, and that's what happens when you take them. Hallam didn't take theirs, and they've been punished. Absolutely. And it's just skimmed out there by... O'Leary, and it's an overhead kick by the defender. And with the goal scorer for Uni of Sheffield, I mean, we were absolutely blinded by the sun. I'm not entirely sure who it was. And it's crossed across here. Sheffield Hallam struggling to keep the ball. They've given it away in a terrible area. You have to say, though, not knowing the goal scorers, the great thing about grassroots football, patching it together. Yeah, well, unfortunately, the goal scorer was just blocked by the view of a man in front of me with a bucket hat. And Uni of Sheffield are looking to extend their lead to three in, in surprising circumstances, wouldn't you say, Carlos? Definitely so. I do think Hallam, though, they deserve to be punished for not taking their moments. All the good football teams, or when you try and win games, you obviously create chances, or you know you can create them. It's about taking them. I don't think they've had the mentality to take them. Absolutely. And, well, for the sake of entertainment, I think we're sort of hoping for a, uh, a Liverpool, AC Milan, Istanbul-style comeback, um, which they're going to try and start now as it's played through, but brilliantly sliding down by the Uni of Sheffield player. And they're looking to get it out. Maybe you could go one greater in terms of comebacks. There's a local one here last year in the playoffs of Sheffield Wednesday. Absolutely. Well, any kind of comeback would be great for the neutral here, but let's be real, if, uh, it's very unlikely you're a neutral watching a Sheffield Varsity fixture like this one. Uh, Uni of Sheffield constantly posing a threat, and I've been a little bit underwhelmed by the efficiency of Hallam. They've been very wasteful, like you say, Carlos, and... That needs to change if they've got any chance of getting back into this game. Well, I'm just looking at the manager. He's been pointing out loads of openings and opportunities for Hallam. I agree they need to be patient and not lose their heads in this game, but they've got to start doing something more quickly. Absolutely. Well, could this be the start of it? They're starting from the back again, looking for that long ball, which they're going to try and play. Find itself with Uni of Sheffield again. And to be honest with you, as much as I can can praise Benson, he's looking a little bit lost out there at the moment, the prolific striker. I do feel a bit sorry for him. The bird on him is very high to create and to score. Yeah. Oh, that could have gone nasty. An outstretched foot there, but Uni of Sheffield on the attack again. Ball played low and hard, but intercepted by Sheffield Hallam. And the defender who made that brilliant interception now is just going to cruise out with it, finding a, finding a ball with a bit of patience. That's what they need. They need a little bit more patience, but he's nearly given it away there. It's brilliant by, by the Uni of Sheffield. They're forcing them into these decisions. They've defended so valiantly. It's a nasty challenge there. Sorry to interrupt, Carlos. That was a nasty coming together. And I think the man on the floor is that man... Number 36, and that's Mackenzie Ross, who's been a standout player so far. And he came together with a Uni of Sheffield player, and the outcome looks to be a little bit nasty. Can I just say as well, Carlos, I'm not entirely sure why the floodlights are on here when <laughs> it's absolutely blinding sun. Yeah, don't need it today. The sun is blinding. It's uh, yeah. definitely stopped us from seeing a couple of the goals too well. Well, that's a message to you, Sheffield Hallam, in terms of sustainability. I mean... <laughs> I don't think we need the floodlights on. And they need to try and just even just keep possession for a few minutes and, and, and dishearten Uni of a little bit. 
It's all about that mental game. They're having to play it all the way back to the goalkeeper. It almost feels like there's a lack of belief in this Hallam side. Absolutely. They're struggling to play through this Uniov team. They're set up really well, Uniov, making it hard to make themselves hard to break down. But you've got to be quicker. Absolutely. And they just can't seem to get out. And Union of Sheffield have also got to be careful that they keep their defensive line in good shape so a ball like that can't go through and find its way all the way to a Sheffield Hallam player. And number 36, Mackenzie Ross, is back on his feet, which is good to see. And he's going to try and play it forward. I've got to say, there's no runs in beyond from Sheffield Hallam from their front men. It's all good playing to feet but that forces you to go back most of the time. Here we go. Here's Benson. It's a fantastic shot on goal. I mean, it would have gone wide, but the follow-up is saved, and that's an amazing opportunity. Oh, goodness me. Like I said earlier, moments, moments, moments. Hallam, you've got to take your chances. Absolutely. That was point-blank range. It's brilliant reactions from the uni of keeper, but I do feel he's got to score. Ah, Benson's first shot on goal would have gone wide, I think. I mean, it's difficult to tell from the angle we're... We are at, but I think it would have gone wide, but it was a ferocious shot. Well, if there's one thing for sure, you have to make sure you cover all the angles as a goalkeeper. You don't want to be embarrassed, especially with the cameras here today. Yeah, absolutely. And you get a feeling that <laughs> Benson might be unlucky not to get a goal today. I mean, if I was a Uni of Sheffield defender, even though I'm a University of Sheffield student, I might add, I would feel genuine fear facing a shot of that power again. He's a bully, almost in the ilk of someone like Romelu Lukaku. Yeah, absolutely. And that's been given as a foul to Sheffield Hallam. It's a heavy coming together. It was, I believe, for Union of Sheffield number four, Josh Morton. Another dangerous opportunity here, though. Yeah. Just a chance to create something. Union of are looking a bit more wobbly defensively now. Mm. You've got to test them. Well, this is going to be a key moment for Sheffield Hallam as we continue ticking down the clock to, to half time. I mean, a goal here would be absolutely massive and maybe would quiet down the, the rather raucous Uni of Sheffield cluster of supporters behind the goal well we're in right next to the Hallam sort of end of supporters or corner or contingent and they've been very silent all game they haven't had much to cheer for no there's been a few good attempts on goal but that's about it well it, the man standing over this is Mackenzie Ross who's looking to shoot but it's blocked by a very well organized Brilliant ball, ball. But, uh, the Union of Sheffield player has gone down with a head injury and the captain number five there for Union of Sheffield um, sort of having a go, Eddie Norton that is, having a go the referee about how quickly he blew his whistle, saying it wasn't quick enough. You know, head injuries are treated with such care these days and it took a little while for the referee to recognise it. I've got to say, the Uni of Sheffield captain has led by extremely good standards today. He's been loud, he's been making sure the teammates hear him, but also he's led by his performance. He's really silenced that Hallam front line. Well, Carlos, as we get closer to half-time, who would be your player of the half? Possibly the Uni of goalkeeper. He's made yeah. two important saves. And he's been, a, as much as the Uni of Sheffield captain has been a leader, I think the goalkeeper has made a lot of the key decisions about moving his team up the pitch and preparing for an attack. I think an honourable mention also to Hallam's Benson. He's been brilliant. He's been really linking the play. He's just been fortunate that the other attackers haven't really been on his wavelength. Well, he's been man-marked for most of this first period by the Uni of Sheffield captain, and he's, yeah, he's, he's been limited to what he could do, but I do think looking at his style of play and his, like you say, that Lukaku-esque uh, power of his shot, you know, it could easily end up in the back of the net if he's given even a, an inch of space. And it's bobbling around the box here. Finds its way into the hands of the... Sheffield Hallam goalkeeper. The sun's starting to finally trickle down now. Yes, maybe we'll be able to see uh, see things in the Hallam half a little bit more clearly. Long ball played to absolutely no one. One thing you can say, I think, so far is that maybe the Sheffield Hallam goalkeeper's distribution hasn't quite been as good as it needs to be. I, I would argue, though, the same for, for Finn O'Leary, the University of Sheffield goalkeeper. He's played a lot of low balls that have nearly gone wrong. I don't think the Hallam goalkeeper has been helped by the forward runners, though. No. They haven't really gone into the areas where they can exploit maybe some defensive weaknesses. Oh, that's a terrible clearance by Sheffield Hallam as 
Uniar find themselves on the front foot once again. And it's an absolute mess of, of, of bodies in the final third, and it's been given as a free kick to Hallam. And despite the sunshine, I just felt a little trickle of rain, so maybe that could affect proceedings. And it's a brilliant tackle on Benson. It's been given as a free kick. I'm not quite sure, not what sure that was. about that one. Like I said, though, Benson's so important for this Hallam team. They've got to get him on the ball more, but also, like I said, they're not be over-reliant on him. They've got to get him good service. Absolutely, yeah. Ball played across the centre circle. And that the Sheffield Hallam defensive line is so far forward. Lobbed in, but cleared brilliantly. The conditions are really starting oh, yeah. to pick up now with the wind. I mean, the, the sun's gone behind a very dark cloud. It's almost like a, a footballing eclipse here. And maybe that's going to be symbolic to maybe a change in style for Sheffield Hallam as they bring it forward. And the wind is really picking up now. A few drops of rain are hitting my uh, notepad. Oh, and it's a terrible ball by Sheffield Hallam. And they're on the break here, Uniov. Can they make it count? Oh, and it's a big slip there from Uni of Sheffield's winger. But it's all the way through to Benson and surely offside, yes. Oh, it's a terrible moment offside. for Hallam. Like I said, just in the final third, they can't seem to get their feet sorted out or well, the decision's right. <laughs> just to mention it, I've just seen a member of the crowd just ironically do a VAR gesture to the linesman there. I mean, frankly, I didn't even see the run from Benson. He seemed to come out of nowhere like a freight train, uh, but it was deemed offside by the linesman. And it's really filling up here, isn't it? There's a lot more people in the last five or 10 minutes or so. Yeah, we can start to see the Hallam cheerleaders get ready. Absolutely. The Uni of Sheffield. I think they'll go in very happy at half-time, being 2-0 up. Yeah, I think Hallam have just got to get over this mental block now. Since going 2-0 down, they've seemed to lose their way. Yeah. And we're seeing a Wrexham-style throw in here. And it's bobbling around the box, and it's a fantastic goal. Amazingly well worked by University of Sheffield. And that, I keep saying it, I mean, I'm sure some football fans might disagree with me saying Wrexham-style throwing, but it was. It was a long throwing into the box and a fantastic, almost toe poke into the top left of the goal. And it's been a fascinating game of football. I mean, Sheffield Hallam have not been that bad, but they've conceded three goals. It was and such a critical moment, though, you've got to say. Yeah, huge moment in that. Could well be game over now. I mean, 2 0 with Hallam pressing and potentially finding a goal. It could have been a completely different story. Well, now we definitely need a Liverpool AC Milan style comeback yeah. for the neutral. I did look at Benson after that goal. I just looked at him, his body language. He looked very defeated. Yeah. Now, the Uni of Sheffield defence has been solid as a rock so far. I feel like Hallam have been playing some ambitious balls really that they've just not been quite on the same wavelength about I mean I mean that goal then I mean it's oh it's intercepted by Uni of Sheffield they're in on goal and it's missed in spectacular fashion that's a big big it moment should have been four Hallam's so reckless there yeah I think the biggest weakness for Hallam has been the defence so far that was almost an absolutely awful goal to concede. The manager must be screaming at them at half-time. They've been yeah. so poor in these last five minutes. If you're not going to score, make sure you don't concede. Yeah. Well, I wonder whether there'll be any descent in the ranks at half-time in that Hallam squad. And <laughs> it finds itself again in the Sheffield Hallam half. The defence of Hallam just look nervous all game. They haven't looked right. They have, haven't they? They've been, you know, they've been so easy to break down. And I don't know, maybe from this distance to their defence, it's difficult to tell. But maybe the Sheffield Hallam defence just isn't quite as physical of uni as Uni Ovs. 
Hallam seem to have concentrated a lot of their physicality up front. I like this man, Benson, who's charging forward, but he's had a pressure applied to him. They're surrounding him again. He's not got the support really he needs. No. He's like a magnet. <laughs> and they need to not give it away cheaply. I will say, though, it's impressive how they've remained sort of calm in possession, though. Indeed, yeah. And they've won it back again, Uniov. Hallam just don't look as good at the moment. Oh. I think I gave him the commentator's curse there. Yeah. I think that was just a coming together there. No real malicious intent from Sheffield Hallam's number 77. As Uniov's left back retreats into position. I will say, though, the big moment was definitely the penalty, but yeah. also the second goal coming not too long afterwards. It really knocked Hallam back. Absolutely. Well, I mean, the floodgates open, really, from the moment that penalty went in. You could just tell Hallam's defence was nervous. Here's a ball into Benson, but brilliantly dealt with by the Uni of Sheffield captain. And they're bringing it forward here. And it's well over the line. Ooh, and a little bit of... Pushing and shoving that between the two sets of players. You can see the frustration setting in for Hallam. I think they'll realise that they played really well in that first 20 minutes and they were causing the Uni of problems. But then they've really been the catalyst for their own downfall. Absolutely, yeah, I couldn't agree more. And what do you do if you're Sheffield Hallam's manager at half-time? I mean, well, you know, in terms of a tactical change, is it... A matter of formation, do you think, Carlos? I think it's a matter of belief. You've got to make sure they're believing again. That's your one number one role as a manager. Whilst you can bring all the tactics and all the ideas that you want, the best managers make sure they've got their players motivated. Well, it's going to be difficult to get those players believing again. I think a goal before half-time is pretty much the only way they're going to be able to do that. And it's a long ball played in, and they just couldn't quite get there. And I thought we were sort of becoming uh, numb to the chances that Union of Sheffield are having because they're so frequent now. And if the sake of Hallam and, and their supporters here, you know, they'll be not wanting to be humiliated, especially on their own turf as well here at Sheffield Hallam Sports Park. I think you can discredit the way that Uni have controlled the game. They've struggled to do that, but you've got to say they play with more purpose when it gets to those forward areas. Yeah. And Benson having to drop back now. He's looking for options. Lifting his arms, he's clearly frustrated. His head's down. His body language tells me that he's not happy with the, uh, the support he's getting and the, the ball's being played into him. I think he's earned the right to be frustrated today. He's been probably, arguably, the best player on the pitch. And he really hasn't received the help from his teammates. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Benson and, and Mackenzie Ross, for me, I think, are my two uh, best players for Hallam so far. And as for Uniov, uh, it's got to be Finn O'Leary. And then who else would you say, Carlos, for Uniov? I've, I mean, got, to, I've got to say the forward line has done very well. Yeah. I, I think mean, maybe the number 12, Miles yeah. Bolger, he's done really well. Yeah, he's done well as well. But on the attack here, looking to extend their lead. And this is where Hallam needs to break, but they just can't quite get out. And it, Mackenzie Ross, I mean, he's having to take on three players there with no support. I mean, I'd argue that his Hallam teammates are sort of letting him down this half. Perhaps it's a question of profile for Hallam. I'm looking at the players on the pitch, and quite a lot of them don't have the confidence to drive through the pitch and carry the ball. Mm. Maybe a couple of, ta rather than tactical tweaks, profile tweaks. I'd, I'd argue that the Sheffield Hallam wingers need to come a little bit narrower because at the moment you've got a very, very good set of full backs for Uniov and they've, they've just tried the same strategy the whole half. I mean, you can see them on the far side of the pitch from where we are, the Hallam player trying to make that run and he's not getting any service. So what do you do then? You need to come inside, you need to come back and you need to support your midfield. Definitely, I definitely agree. One thing I'll also say is though, that Uniov have defended well, especially the fullbacks. Mm. That's a really poor ball again. Although they haven't had much to do when Hallam are doing that, when that's what they're creating. Well, if I was the Sheffield Hallam manager, I'd really rethink those wide areas because it's not working at the moment. Number 41 for... Uh,
Yeah, well, he will. He wears the old number of Declan Rice, but he hasn't really reached that kind of level of control in the midfield. He's a different type of player too. Yeah. And they're just trying to, <laughs> to do anything this half, and it's just not working. And you need Sheffield on the break now, but it's a brilliant challenge by Mackenzie Ross, the number 36. And he's, I'm trying to think about who he's most similar to. You know, I mean, he's, he's almost like a an Iniesta almost in that midfield, an engine. Yeah, he definitely twinkles oh. with his feet, almost like a Bernardo Silva type player. He's willing to get stuck in, but also has really good tight, close control. And that is half time. And that chance there by Sheffield Hallam, again, was toothless. Just, just as we conclude this first half, no real threat to Finn O'Leary's goal. And that is the end of the first half here. I'm Adam Hume Thomas and my co-commentator Carlos Fellows are really excited to bring you what we're hoping is a second half of slightly more competitive, maybe a few goals for Hallam to maybe spice things up. Yeah, hopefully so. Maybe not as ambitious as a Liverpool Mellon comeback, but I would like to see a bit more fight from Hallam.
Welcome back to Sheffield Varsity as we look to begin this second half. The score stands at 3-0 at the moment. And due to technical difficulties, it's just going to be me for the time being. As we had a bit of a crazy hailstorm during halftime and that seems to have wiped out some of the electronics. But luckily, uh, you're still able to hear my voice. And it will be Sheffield Hallam kicking towards the sun this half. Uh, let's see what they can do to maybe come back into this one. And we are back underway. And Hallam find themselves with a golden opportunity early on, but it's back into the hands of the Union Sheffield goalkeeper. And there's a stoppage in player. Union of Sheffield player just hadn't been a word of the referee. Maybe, maybe a head injury there. And Sheffield Hallam have the unenviable task of kicking towards the sun this half. And I have the unenviable task of commentating while being blinded by it. And I can just make out O'Leary going to be taking this goal kick. And Unioff bring it down and back under control in their defence now. Long ball play forward over on the wing. And it's going to be out for Sheffield Hallam. Throw in. And they've got so much ground to make up this half. It's really a wonder what the Hallam manager said at half time that could maybe inspire some change and inspire that Istanbul inspired comeback. Yeah, a great, great, great start from Hallam. They're a bit more purposeful. They've mm. got to be more purposeful, though. I think they lacked it in the first half. Well, I'm just welcoming back Carlos Fellows to the commentary team as we get our technical issues sorted. And it's going to be Uni of Sheffield throwing. The disadvantage Hallam have got now is that they're kicking against the sun. Yeah, I mean, the, the playing surface has got to be so slick now after that bit of flash rain we've had at half time and the ball's just going to glide across the ground it does make for better football though it does absolutely it does indeed and Uni of Sheffield on the attack here with a bit of ferocity breaking into the box and it's taken down but there's no real malicious intent there it's a great challenge he was physical with him he stuck with him he didn't yeah. dive in too early yeah, certainly yeah and there's a little bit more shadow actually crossing the pitch now in this half so, uh, And Unihov just pressing and pressing, no, no let up from them. And they've won themselves a throw in in a good area. It's been an odd start from Hallam. They started well in those first two minutes, but they're sinking a bit deeper. It's a bit unusual. And maybe it's something about being at this end of the pitch that means you defend with such a deep line. And it's a, it's a volleyed effort by Uni of Sheffield that's gone, uh, gone into Rose Ed if there was a Rose Ed in this. Uh, Sports Park. It's a great effort. He's took it on the volley, but he shouldn't really be having that much space in the box. No. The Hallam defence a bit ropey again. And there's some stretches going on here, just in front of our <laughs> commentary area by Hallam play the number 44. <laughs> and we're back underway with that long sweeping goal kick for Hallam. They've got to just try and find more space. Try and find a way through, a way of breaking that very solid Uni of Sheffield back line. And the ball in that clash of legs has gone absolutely flying, almost finding its way to the, <laughs> the rugby pitch uh, behind us. It's better from Hallam though, getting further forward. Oh, there's some pushing and shoving going on here. Yeah, Uni of Romania physical. Yeah, well it was Cam Coop for Sheffield Hallam involved in that little bit of verbal battle. And he's taken a quick throw in. 
There's, there's confusion all over the place about what's going on. The referee's coming over to have a word with number 44, Cam Coop, for Sheffield Hallam, the left back. The union forward, number 11, just on his haunches at the moment. Looks to take a bit of a blow. And there's a potential injury situation here. Just in front of us, in front of the commentary area. Nice exchange of jokes between the referee and the crowd. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And that's Matt uh, Judd have that. Maybe got a bit of a leg issue, muscular it would seem. Let's see what comes out of that, but this free kick taken long. It's a brilliant ball into a dangerous area, but cleared uh, very professionally by Uni of Sheffield. The big difference as well is that Uni of are just much quicker to the second balls. I thought Hallam yeah. would respond, but they haven't really. Well, they've got to be accurate, haven't they? They've got to be a lot more accurate this half, Hallam, because of so many opportunities squandered just due to a lack of care with, with their delivery. Oh, they're inside the box now. And they're on the press, and it's found its way to Hallam. Oh, that's an absolutely unbelievable defensive bit of work from Union of Sheffield, especially Finn O'Leary, the goalkeeper. Better from Hallam. There was definitely more purpose in that attack. Yeah. And it was, I think it was Benson around the back, wasn't it? Um, I believe the number 20. Almost poached the goal there yeah. as well. Strike his instinct to, to find himself at the back post. And it was almost tipped in, but you know, Sheffield's defensive instincts have been second to none this game. And <laughs> what was that? That was quite unusual. The 25 for Sheffield Hallam, that's Silas Collins. Had a cross, but it went straight to the keeper in there. Keep almost on. an awkward moment there, though. Almost. <laughs> almost. And it's flicked on, but well intercepted by Hallam, and it's <laughs> gone out for a throw in. I mean, we talk about accuracy, uh, Carlos. That's not the accuracy that we want to see. Well, certainly no. not for Hallam's sake. But no. they almost remind me a bit of a team like Brighton, where they come up against good defensive structures and they can't break them down. And because they've committed so many players, they leave themselves mm. quite open. Well, it's been given as a, I believe, a Uni of Sheffield throw in as they look to try and press and break into that attacking third. Once again, and find that fourth goal, which they very, very nearly got in the first half. But they failed to do so in spectacular fashion. It's going to be a, a Hallam throw in. What Hallam have got to make sure of is that this doesn't turn into a formality. They can't let the game just seep into a nothing game. They've got to make yeah. sure they have a route back into the game. Well, as you know, Carlos, they're fighting for valuable varsity points. Um, and that's just not going to happen if they if they lay down and, and die here, Hallam. I mean, yes, they're three goals down, but, you know, when, when it's end to end, it, like, like it is here, anything could happen. And there's number 25 trying to reach the ball. That's, um, once again, Silas Collins. That's been their major problem, just the accuracy on those long passes. Yeah. They've tried it all game, hasn't really come off. Oh, and it's a nasty challenge from Hallam. And he's, he's made contact there with number 14 for University of Sheffield. That's Mark Ashley. Yeah, late challenge. Referee, it wasn't a good one. Referee calls over the, the culprit for Hallam. So yeah, let's go coming together. Some oohs and ahs from the crowd as, as they came clattering in into each other. And it's the number 10 for Hallam, who's the, uh, the guilty party that this will, have. This will only open opportunities for Uniov now. Yeah, with man. players earning bookings, they can't stop these transitions mm. when they lose possession. Well, it's the first booking of this game, uh, Carlos, and it's been a very open game in terms of the way it's been officiated. There's been a lot of challenges flying in and you know, there's no, you know, dishing out of those cards. He's been very uh, stubborn when it's when it's come to booking. And this will be a long ball driven low. Oh, it's a fantastic flick on. Still with Uni of Sheffield, still bobbling around in a dangerous area. Brought out now, down to the wing. What can they do? And it's a, a 
scrambled slide tackle and we're going to see I keep mentioning it uh, wreck some style throwing and you mentioned earlier about how the game's been like a basketball game end to end it certainly suits yeah. the uni of Sheffield more you can see you Hallam they're trying to control the game slow it down but they haven't been able to do that yeah well they've got more pace I think uni of Sheffield up front whereas Hallam are, Hallam are trying to play a physical game up front but they're not giving it to their physical players they're trying to play out wide so much. I mean, if you're going to do that, then you're going to have to find the likes of uh, Nick Benson in the middle in, in that sort of dangerous heading area. But they've not really had succinct opportunities to be able to, to play those balls into him in the box. They've, they've barely been in Union of Sheffield's box so far. I know Hallam are desperate because they're 3-0 down. Yeah. But you cannot be thrashing at clearances like that for that throw in just. They've got to make sure... They're still calm and composed in possession, just more efficient, more quick. You can be in control of the game whilst playing those sort of risky passes. There's plenty of football still to be played here. Can Hallam claw their way back into this? And the more time that passes, the more you think the manager maybe has to change something. I mean, you said before half time that that pep talk he, we would have given has to change the amount of belief they have and if that fails then you've really got to start looking at your bench well we talked about how certain at certain times certain comebacks can happen but they've got to make it happen quickly they've got to make something happen quickly because the game is petering out and it's going to be Sheffield Hallam throw in what can they do they're going to try and play this long I mean that seems to be what the teammate is signalling. And it finds itself with Hallam. Normally neither team can keep hold of the ball for more than about five seconds before it changes hands. And it's flicked in brilliantly. That's an opportunity here for Hallam. Still in. Oh. And is it a, is it a goal? How's that stayed out? I, don't, I have no idea. I mean, did it hit the crossbar? That was quite bizarre, Carlos. Um, I mean, the, the, the ball seemed like it was being sucked into the goal there. You would have thought that would have ended up in the back of the net, but according to the referee, not. It typifies the day Hallam have had, though. Yeah. In the final moments, in the final areas, they just haven't taken their opportunities. I was just about to say before that chance, they don't look like they're going to create anything. They don't like they're going to be a danger to the game at all. But if they can continue to do that, there's every chance. Well, Union Sheffield are looking a little tired, I will say. Which may be contributing to a little bit more openness in the final third for, for Sheffield Hallam. Once again, though, you just look at that, that ball that's just gone out of play. He's got to play a better pass. You've been on the field for 60 minutes now or so. You've got to make sure those passes are accurate. Yeah. And the ball is about to be put back into play. I mean, at the moment, I'm squinting to be able to see over that. But it is a Uni of Sheffield throw-in. It's, it's so beautifully sunny, but then we've had patches of really wet weather that may affect the playing surface. And Uni of Sheffield are scrambling to get it out. They're looking a bit more like Hallam were in the first half. But here we go. What can they do? I've got to say, that is poor from Uni off there. There was a, an infield runner who's going to be in acres of space. I know the ball's going out of play, but you've got to be better in possession than that. Yeah, I'd certainly agree, Carlos. And the number 44 here for Sheffield Hallam has taken that throw in, Cam Coop. And they're, they're, I will say they're finding their front man a little bit more Hallam now. And if they can get that all-important goal, who knows what can happen. For me, Hallam, have got to stop making this a cagey game. They've got yeah. to exert some control at certain points. They have two minutes where they, you think they've got control of the game, then they lose possession. That was a brilliant tackle there for Hallam, and they're on the break again. Here's, here's Cam Coop, who plays it long, and just about finds his man, and it's skimmed into the box, but not finding anyone still with them. Oh... It's going to be out for a goal kick, I believe. 
I've got to say, Hallam have come out and been better in the second half, but they really struggled again to create any sort of opening apart from the one we just saw about 10 minutes ago. I really do think there has been opportunities. They've had found pockets of space, but they haven't really exploited them. And it's a substitution for Uni of Sheffield. And off the field, I believe... Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think it was Alex uh, Whale or Vale... Uh, spelt W-E-I-L, who's come off the field of play. And unfortunately, uh, I couldn't see who had come on, as is his face in the opposite direction. But, yeah, I think it's Alex Whale coming off. Or uh, Vial. And it's a bit of a dangerous ball, but unfortunately, Hallam couldn't, couldn't quite win it. And with Silas Collins, who's had a definitely had a greater stake in this first half, in the, in the you know, in, in the second half, pardon, yeah, in the first half he really couldn't find his feet or he didn't really receive much of a good delivery. But he's been more involved this half, and you can almost imagine him sneaking in at the back post and tapping one in. I think he's benefited from a bit more accuracy from the midfield. Yeah, and they're looking much better actually, Hallam now. But you get that sense, like I keep saying, that the more that time progresses, the, the, the less confident they'll be of finding a, a whole important, well, at the moment, it would seem a consolation goal, but who knows? Oh, and it, oh, that must have hurt. Well, we talk about how well the have started this second half, but they're still not achieving anything. No, and here come Uni of Sheffield down the wing. Oh, it's brilliant control, but... Even better from Hallam as the number 11 marches forward. And the referee Surely running a over. It's, I think it is going to be a booking. The number 11 for Hallam, uh, Brandon Bradbury, made an excellent run there. And will it be a booking? I'm not sure it will be. Lucky it's a bit fortunate to get away with that one. I think he stopped a dangerous counter-attack. It was a great slaloming run almost yeah. from the Hallam midfielder. And it's going to be a low-driven ball in, and it's found its way inside the box. Shot! And it is a goal. It's a goal for Sheffield Hallam to make it 3-1, and that's the goal I was talking about. And he's carried the ball straight from the back of the net to the centre circle. Oh, and I think there is a injury situation here for Cam Coop. Maybe some cramp. Yeah. But I've got to say, you know, Sheffield have let this happen. They've, yeah, they've really sat have. deep. They haven't really attacked with the same purpose as they did in the first half. And I know you're freeing it up, but sometimes the change in sort of the philosophy you approach the game with can hurt you. Yeah. It's too early to be playing a game like this. And I think the goal scorer was, uh, was Silas Collins, if I'm not mistaken. And I was just talking, well, I believe it was him, I think. Um, we are currently being blinded by the sun here uh, on Forge TV. Um, but, I mean, I was talking about his increased role in the game. And, well, if I am correct, he's, he's found a nice goal for Hallam there. And it is 3-1, so who knows what could happen. But Uni of Sheffield could instantly erase that. And it's going to be hit on the volley. Ooh. Oh, wayward. Well, I don't think he's going to be uh, writing the headlines in his dreams tonight with that one. No. no he's looking for a Paolo Di Canio-esque volley, I think. Or a, Well, I say Paolo Di Canio. More of a Peter Crouch, actually, from that position on the field. A Peter Crouch volley. Yeah, just lacking a bit of the technique behind that one. Yeah. Once again, though, it's it's a bit better from Uniov. They have got to get it in that Hallam box. They've got to make the Hallam defence commit and make errors because this time the time will come for that now. They're free one. They're free one up. The the spaces will open on the counter. And it certainly will. And it's going to make for a more interesting second period of this game. As here comes Benson, all the way back to O'Leary. I think he's there. Just you can see there, just a slight. Poor touch. I think he's been a victim of not receiving the ball enough in a situation like that. He's always receiving the ball with his back towards the goal. He's never yeah. really had an opportunity to run at that unit of defence. Oh, and here he comes. Here's Cam Coop. 
with the shot, but deflected and back to the goalkeeper. The manager's not happy with that one. No, he's absolutely furious. I mean, it was a bit of a waste, really. There's no... You shouldn't really be taking a shot from, from that distance. Hallam are regaining control of the game, though. They did this in the first half. That's the worrisome thing, I would say. So they're managing to control the game and create attacks, but then they had a sucker punch or two sucker punches in the space of five minutes. Yeah. Uniov don't look like they're going to do that, though, in this half. Mm. Yeah, I'd be inclined to agree with you, Carlos. I think Hallam are looking the better of the opportunity so far, and they find themselves in a dangerous position again. It's skimmed across and ooh. Ooh, just scooped up by the goalkeeper. But Collins and Benson are both looking, uh, you know, deadly at Benson just down on the ground there. I think he might have an issue with cramp. And I think the cramp issues that we're seeing so far, maybe that was a product of the fact that Sheffield Hallam went in about 10 minutes before kickoff, whereas Uniov were, were still on the pitch, keeping warm right before kickoff. Maybe that's played a part. Certainly, mm -hmm. you can see the intensity that Union were playing yeah. over in the first half. They're slightly dropped their levels, but it's so much better now from Hallam, I think. They're getting runners in the box. There's people who want to attack and score. Yeah, and here they come again. Union Sheffield looking to make it 4-1 now across the box. And it's drilled out and misjudged by Union Sheffield, and it's a shot. Oh, and it's just rolled wide. Oh, that's a lucky moment for Hallam. I've got to say, it's a good interception, but I think the centre seven there, he just stuck his luck out instinctively and brilliantly. It's unfortunate that it rolled to a Union of Sheffield player, but that is the danger they offer on the counter. Mm. Well, it's going to be a corner here to University of Sheffield. And this is the last thing Hallam wants. I mean, we've not had too many corners in this game, but you get the sense that at, at this certain level of football that, that corners can be oh so unpredictable and chaotic. I mean, the strategy here from Union of Sheffield, as you can see, is... Uh, very much going to be last minute running still with it they've done well there Hallam just to defend it they've got a bit of a height disadvantage they've read it well yep and now straight onto the attack come Hallam and it's Collins mounting the pressure oh and it's an amazing ball by O'Leary but it's amazing defending by Hallam, and that's the kind of tenacity you need to, to sort of hang on and, and, and try and get back into this game. But we've got an injury. The man who's just so excellently cleared it for Hallam, Matt, uh, Jadhav, has gone down with, uh, with cramp, it would seem. They're going to have to have more moments like that, though, Hallam. As the game gets stretched, as they search for those goals, there are going to be moments where the wide players for Uniov will be able to attack spaces. It's a brilliant leaping interception, but they've got to be careful. Yeah, they certainly do. I mean, I, this second half has been really entertaining, the fact that Hallam have, have, have maybe stepped it up a, a gear, you know, if nothing else, and, and, and been pushing for that, for that comeback. But here come the substitutions for Union Sheffield, too many to name. I think some much needed energy though. They have just dropped in their intensity. Yeah. The reason why Hallam was struggling in the first half is because when they lost the ball, they were being blitzed on the counter attack. I can tell you that Elliot Murray has come on for University of Sheffield. That's one of the players. Definitely a contingent of uni of supporters who are cheering on their mates. Yeah. It must be a proud moment seeing some of your mates represent the uni. Yeah. Can only imagine the pride in that, especially to see Union of Sheffield winning. And if you are a fan of one of these Sheffield Hallam players, you can also be proud of them too. I mean, they've played much better in this second half, I think. Been more efficient and been more succinct in their play. Like I said, I think Hallam have got to stop making this a cagey game. They are capable of producing moments. They've just got to keep their heads and be clear in what they want to do, concise. Yeah. Well, they're, they're playing sort of less loose balls to the wing and they're, they're, their accuracy has definitely improved, but none of that will matter if they let Junior Sheffield attack like they are. And this has surely got to be an opportunity. And it's the man who's just come on, it's Murray, who's take, taken on his man. And I 
That's a goal kick, yeah. It's well defended by the Hallam defence. He just, he had a moment to hit it, but he just didn't quite take it or just didn't hit sit right for him, I don't think. Yeah. He didn't look confident taking it, and that's where the opportunity just went away. Yeah, well, Hallam's defence has definitely been much improved this half. I mean, they've just looked a little more comfortable, and maybe, I don't know, I don't know what the manager said to them at half time, but they look less panicked by the approaching runs of uh, the team in bright yellow. I've got to say, respect to Hallam though for continuing yeah. to play how they want to. Yeah, and here they come Hallam. Can they get another? This will be an all important moment. And the ball's back in play, but two players from the opposing team were just shaking hands there. I'm not sure what that was about. Hallam under pressure, but they keep the ball, and this is a brilliant bit of play from them. And they found themselves in a fantastic position, but intercepted by Uniov. And now it's end-to-end -end stuff. This has been a fantastic second half. This is exactly what Uniov will want. Oh, and it's through on goal. He's got to have a shot, and he does, and it's saved, but it's going to be followed in by the University of Sheffield who get this game wrapped up to get them those varsity points. And the goal scorer, number seven, is Will Brooks, the left winger. I mean, he had the easiest job in the world there. I mean, the initial shot from the University of Sheffield, uh, their player, I think it was the number 14. That's, that's Mark Ashley, who's, who's a, a decent striker. I mean, his initial shot was good and it was a great save by Hallam's goalkeeper, but couldn't have really been easier for for that man, Will Brooks, the number seven, the, uh, the, the goal that has probably most likely wrapped this game up, Carlos. Well, I've got to say, I think it was bound to happen with Hallam committing so much numbers. But then again, it's too much space defensively. They don't come across quick enough and they're punished. Their reactions haven't been quick enough and in the moments they've been punished because Uniov have only really had the goals as their moments all game. Hallam have had many of them and not taken them. Yeah. The best teams know how to take their chances, know to when to take the moments. And now you struggle to see Hallam getting anything or even mm. a consolation goal from this game. Well, it's all about that that mentality and the, the psychological aspect of this of this fixture. I mean you know, with that goal are they are they gonna feel damned and, 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 and out of this one? Well, only time will tell. I mean, <laughs> stranger things have happened. But surely University of Sheffield will feel they've done enough to get this one over the line. Yeah, I think we're going to need more than a spectacle of Liverpool Milan for a comeback here. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's quite a stretch to to compare um, <laughs> Uniov and Sheffield Hallam to, to that, especially considering the, the, well, the, the comeback of that game. And, you know, maybe we could have seen something similar if Hallam had... had, had had really capitalised after they scored that goal and, and gone and got another one. But it hasn't happened for them and they're going to have to try and deal with that now and maybe try and mitigate the amount the of fresh energy there. Facing. You can just see it. Yeah, I mean, the number 71 for Uni of Sheffield. He's only had a few touches in this game and he's making them count. Find himself on the edge of the box now. And that shot is going to be collected. Calmly. I think the managers have also influenced this game well. You see the you can see the Hallam changes didn't really have a major effect. No. But the uni off ones definitely have. You can see the wide man here, number 71. He's really committed to the defender. He's yeah. merely made it difficult for him. Well, that number 71 is Leon Morris. And with his first few touches of this game, he's made a real impact. And you can tell his freshness. And I don't think the Hallam supporters are too happy with the fact that wasn't given as a foul. Yeah, you can see players cramping up now. It has been yeah. an intense game. Ah, another player gone down there. They're dropping like flies at the moment. University of Sheffield's Jack Roy's there. Down on the ground. And they're going to make a substitution, I think. Well, it's no real surprise that they're... They're cramping up at this stage of the game. It's been, like you say, Carlos, it's been so intense, so physical, um, with a sprinkling of pace in there, and there's been plenty of goals to show for it, so it's no real surprise that they're going to be making changes at this juncture. I mean, you mentioned the physicality. I think you can see the team has utilised it better, and it's definitely Uni of Sheffield. 
the captain at the back, he's been really strong in his defensive play. They've really nullified Benson up front for Allen. I mean, in terms of the first half, I think we could have probably said, Carlos, that, that maybe there's one a few one or two players from Hallam that could maybe criticise themselves on their performance but the second half I think they've really pulled together and they've been better certainly uh, I think look, every single player on that pitch can be proud but this is the thing about tight games they would have known coming into it that it'll be a tight game and they can be decided by moments and they just haven't had the mentality to take them I don't think Hallam no but Hallam shouldn't give up here. I mean you know they're still a team they're still a team that are trying to develop themselves and they just keep at it and maybe you know even if it is a consolation goal, just keep pushing at Uniov and, and see what can happen. I think the great thing about varsity games is they happen every year. So a lot of these players, maybe if they're second years or third years, going on to do four years, they yeah. can really develop themselves and learn lessons from these kind of games. Yeah. I'm on the attack now. They're in these dangerous areas. I mean, they're going to shoot and it's, it's not a bad effort. I mean, not too far wide. No, I think that's an attempt to frustration, though. They know yeah. the game's just inching away from them. It is. And we're getting closer to those final final stages. And uh, yeah, it really is the charm of grassroots football, this, even if it is for such a prestigious and brilliantly scaled event like Varsity, which you know spans over all of these different sporting events. It's it's a, it's a brilliant, charming game of football, this. And it's been a real privilege so far to cover it. And here come Hallam. It's Cam Coop who chips it into the back post. It's fantastic. And it's a massively wasted opportunity for Sheffield Hallam, who could have found a goal there. And Benson, he's got his hands on his head looking at his teammate. Well, I must have mentioned it 50 times today, but moments, moments, moments. Yeah. Hallam haven't taken them. Uni of Sheffield have. And I think that's the difference in maturity between the teams. You can see that the Uni of Sheffield players, they know how to take chances, but also they're prepared to take them. They're prepared to take the burden. I don't think the Hallam players have really been ready to do that. Well, it's got to be a lack of confidence as well. I mean, at the back post there, he just couldn't quite find the ball and, and make the contact. But that's his job and that's what he needs to be doing better. And that's maybe where they've been lacking, you know, that final, like you say, the final move, the final bit of play to get that goal. And do you know what, something I just want to point out, the Uni of Sheffield's goalkeeper has done that all, all afternoon. He's had those really low-driven bits of distribution. It's been quite unusual, but it's sort of worked for them. Brilliant play there by oh, Uni of Sheffield. Brilliant skill by Uni of Sheffield. The number 71, and that's Leon Morris. And now really the see the connection. It's into the centre, and it's a shot, and it's a brilliant shot at that, but a brilliant deflection too. They're so much slicker in the attacking move, so they, they know where their players are, they know where to move. It's almost like they're on a better personal relationship between each other. Mm. I would say that Leon Morris is sort of in that Phil Foden role where he's, he's roaming, he's, 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 you know, he, he might be, have been brought on as a winger, but he's finding himself in the middle and then he's coming across and he's, he's absolutely everywhere. There he is again, inside the penalty area now. Now on the outside, he, he's, oh, that's a, Unlucky bit of footballing from him. Yeah, Morris, he's a bundle of energy since he's come on and he's sort of unlucky that he's not found himself in a position where he can get a goal or an assist for Uniov. I think that's where the game's changed. You could see in the first half, the defensive instability of Hallam was just exploited. And players like Morris now just having a go at the defence, they're positive, they're impactful, they know what they're going to do, they're confident of what they're going to do. Hallam haven't really had that about their game today. I think that's definitely going to come up by the manager in their post-match uh, debrief from this one. And it's, an, <laughs> it's a pretty terrible goal kick there <laughs> by the Sheffield Hallam goalkeeper. I'm just looking at the faces of the Hallam players. There was a, yeah. almost an air of resignation about them. The, as the ball went out, I saw a few grimaces, almost like the game, they want the game to be over now. Yeah. You need Sheffield join themselves. Uh, here they come again. It's the number 17, and it's a great uh, save with his feet there by the Hallam goalkeeper. Maybe he could flash it across the goal. The space was really yeah. at the, the far post. 
He almost caught the keeper at the near post, but you always give him a better chance of saving it. Well, I think he tried to catch him by surprise, maybe. You know, maybe he thought he was going to go across, but had a shot of goal, and that's great goalkeeping instinct there to just get himself low and, 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 and turn it away with his foot. And oh, it was almost turned in there at the back post by Uni of Sheffield's, I think that was his, the number four. And that's uh, Josh Morton. And we're approaching the closing stages here. It's been a fantastic game of football and one that I think has really reflected just how entertaining Varsity has been in 2024. As critical as we have been of Hallam, they have shown fight, they have shown heart. They've just been defeated in moments and that can happen to any football team. Their, their tactics, their sort of philosophy has been there. It just hasn't come off today. Yeah, I would agree with that, Carlos. And yeah, we've got the sun setting just uh, beyond the trees here. It's an absolutely lovely afternoon, if a little bit chilly. That long throw in taken. Ball not really finding itself in any particular direction until now. Benson running at it, but he's just, he's been like a caged animal this afternoon, really, hasn't he, Benson? He's, He's clearly deadly, but he's not quite found that room to roam. I think he's been limited by his service, unfortunately. It's a shame because you want to see like players like that develop in these games. Yeah. You want to see them. Well, here we go. Here's Union of Sheffield, who still have the ball. It's going to be out for a corner kick. Going back to Benson, you just want to see these kind of players develop their game. and these, You want to see them star. You want to see them have their big moments. And he's just been unfortunate that the ball hasn't really dropped for him. It's dropped for other attackers. I get the idea though that if he's if he is let free, if he's he's given that that sweet ball, then he's able to do something brilliant with it. Great defending there though. And here is, is he gonna have an effort. Union Sheffield on the edge of the box, looking for a little cheeky ball through, but they haven't found it. Hallam haven't managed to get it back either though. They're not getting out quick enough. They look a bit tired now, Hallam. They've yeah. exerted all their energy Ooh. in that first sort of 20, 15 minutes when they were really going at Union of Sheffield. And they didn't make that pressure pay for them in terms of goals or even chances, really. I can't remember too many. Yeah. Yeah, and the number 44, I've just noticed there for Hallam. Uh, Cam Coop still suffering from that injury. Sort of reminds me a little bit of Cole Palmer. Anyway, yeah, and that's another opportunity squandered for Uni of Sheffield. Is it past the face of goal? I must say, it's beautiful conditions for football now. Yeah. Fortunately, we haven't had that for the whole game, especially for us in the commentary box. But no. no here, 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 Hallam come. They could get a consolation here. It's into the box, but Benson had just run too far and too quick. He was arguably too on the ball there. And that's what a lack of service does. It makes you, yeah. it makes you question whether you should make the right one, know when to make it. And I think that's definitely been the difference. The understanding between the players on each team. That's oh, a late one. It's an absolutely ferocious challenge there. As the Uni of Sheffield player does a somersault over his Hallam adversary. I mean, the referees kept play going on here. They should really kick this out, I think. I it's mean, a terrible tackle. It was late. It was dangerous. It was. I mean, and it was definitely an air of frustration about it. Oh, and there's a bit of a heated debate here between the Uni of Sheffield captain and the referee. I think rightfully so as well. I don't yeah. like that kind of challenge. No, it's he definitely it's hasn't gone for the ball. Challenge. It's a nasty challenge that the referee is now claiming that he was playing on. But I mean, with that kind of challenge, you. you you can't play on. I mean, he was in some serious distress on the floor, and we've got medical attention now. Especially at 4 1. Especially at 4 1. You've got to say that those kind of challenges, they're not aims to win the ball, they're tackles of a losing team. Yeah. Tackles of a team who are just trying to get one over the opposition by making a reckless challenge. And I mean, yeah, it's a, it's a deserved yellow card there. I think he's lucky. He could have even been a Reds. You see those kind of tackles now being punished by Reds because really he wasn't going for the ball. Yeah, and he should probably apologise for that one. That was quite a nasty one. And the way he landed. Uh, the, the he's holding his shoulder. He is holding his shoulder, yeah. yeah. It looks like it could be a, a nasty one, but 
Uh, it can't be dislocated as he's just ruffled his hand through his hair, so maybe not quite as serious as we, as we first thought. Ouch. That, that had to have hurt. No, I think the referee sh definitely should have maybe stopped the game straight away. Yeah. It sort of ruined the atmosphere of the game. I mean, you know, he looks a little bit upset with that. There's applause, though, from the Sheff the Union of Sheffield contingent. I think deservedly so. Deservedly He's got so himself indeed. to back up after a pretty tough challenge. Yeah. I'm not sure who the referee's signalling to. Well, he's going to go off the pitch here. The number 14. The Union of Sheffield don't need to commit anyone forward. They've got the game in their hands. They've just got to make sure now there's no silly moments. You can see sometimes see a goal go in and then the heads drop and you become so nervous and you become so desperate to defend your lead that you almost forget your purpose within the game. Yeah. But you know, Sheffield have done that. They've stayed firm even after the goal. And they've even notched one themselves. It's really impressive from them mentally. Yeah, well, it was Mark Ashley, the victim of that horror challenge. Uh, let's hope he's okay. Uni of Sheffield now trying to get their revenge on the ball by scoring another goal. And what's been a pretty dominant display by them. Oh, Seems to be a bit of retribution there. Yeah, challenge going in and he's on the floor, Benson. He looks to be in some discomfort, but... I think referee, his knee may have buckled. Yeah, referee doesn't really care. It's Morris, he's such a, a spring of energy. Like I say, in that sort of Phil Foden role where he's given freedom to, to show his his creativity and his, and his his agility I think. I think one thing you can also say is though Morris is a substitute this is where the depth of quality has also made the difference and the depth of squads you know Sheffield have two more players than Hallam and that sort of choice or the ability to be able to choose two different players to come on and yeah. impact the game is so meaningful That was a brilliant fake shot by uh, Cam Cooper and it's a shot on goal but straight at the goalkeeper Oh, Cam Coop holding his leg. And I've mentioned Cam Coop a lot <laughs> this afternoon because he's uh, playing on the side nearest to us. I've seen him running up and down the wing a lot this afternoon. I don't know if you'd agree with me, Carlos, but he sort of reminds me of Cole Palmer a little bit with his haircut and his... Definitely with his play style as well. Yeah. He's been really impactful. He likes yeah. to sort of trickle into those midfield sort of pockets of space or the half spaces. Yeah. And the Union of Sheffield still with it. And now it's back with Hallam. And what do Hallam do here? What, what, what can they really achieve if, in this last stint of the game? I think they just have to play the game out with honour. I think they know they've lost. Yeah. And here's Benson looking to attack, but it's back and at O'Leary, who's, who's showed a real amount of goalkeeping flair, I think, this afternoon. I think in terms of Hallam's case, they've just got to make sure that they draw a line on this one for the next games they may play next year, probably. This is probably their final game of the year. It must be so hard losing a game like this yeah. with it being the final one. But it there makes it, it so much more important to respond next year. It makes you so much more hungry to do it. Yeah. And here they come once more. The ball bobbling around. They've just got to try and take a shot, I think, Hallam. And ball skimmed into the box, and it's Benson who, who who palms the ball off, trying to get it to his teammate, and it goes wide. Cam Coop again. Oh, I mean, he comes in again. You can just you just get the feeling that that Benson is has untapped potential in this game, and they clearly just didn't have that str uh, that strategy down for him. He almost reminds me of a bit of Haaland where yeah. he, you can see he's got the ability, but the way Haaland play, it doesn't really enable him to get to the ball enough to sort of threaten the opposition. And it's going to be through on the far side from where we are. Uh, on the wing, I thought that might have been the number 71 for Union Sheffield, but it's not, and it's a shot deflected. But still with Union Sheffield, I mean, Haaland looked lethargic and... and, and, and accepting of, of their fate here and that might concern the manager yeah it's gonna be a bit scrappy now this is not what really you want to see a couple of challenges where they're not going for the ball they're just going for a little kick at 
a kick at the player. And yeah. I've got to say, the 77 for Hallam, he's the one who's influenced that kind of culture in these last five minutes. Yeah, it's going to be a yellow card dished out. I think it shows you, though, even though this is a yeah. game between you two universities, that there is a real atomosity. Yeah. Well, it comes with, with Varsity, really. That fierceness, that competitiveness, and that fire of, of wanting to win every single event. I think it just it comes naturally. Well, we can see the sun setting now. It's, it's the sun setting on the Varsity Games for the Sports Park Day today. Yeah. I mean, it's been a fantastic day here at Sheffield Hallam Sports Park. And I think the sun is also setting on a great Uni of Sheffield performance as well in this game. Well, it's sort of like a Clint Eastwood film, isn't it? At the moment with the sun coming down and this uh, cowboy duel between two <laughs> yeah. fantastic teams. Well, it's been less of a duel and more of a mauling. And here he comes, it's Leon Morris. who's going to skim it across, but can't find anyone. It's almost like the Uni of Sheffield have broken that sort of initial truce in the face-off and just showing to show, shoot it straight away. And this corner kick is going to be taken. There's not too many Uni of Sheffield players asking for it. I think it's going to be whipped into the danger area. Which it is. Oh, and is that Stuck on a handball there? Yeah. It looked like a handball. And that's going to be offside, naturally. And he's put it in the back of the net for some reason. And then, OK. Well, if you're not going to be able to get your moment legally, you might as well get it illegally. And yeah, I think he's going to be booked there for that. He, he has a look of uh, a laughter on his face, almost a shock, but I've got to say, I'm not too surprised he's been booked for that one. Although uh, the contingent of Union fans are uh, celebrating it almost like it's an actual goal. I think that must be where his fans are. Well, well the number 14, of course, who just who did that. Mark Ashley. And it's been... Is, is that a free kick? To Sheffield Hallam? Can they get a consolation? I mean, I'd like to see another goal. I don't know about you, Carlos. Oh, definitely so, but... I don't think there's any consolation to defeat, really, <laughs> especially in a game that has got this intense late on. I'm so, I wouldn't be surprised if more tempers flare. And it's whipped in, but headed out. And they've got to stop it bobbling in that danger area, especially with such physical players like Callum have. And here's Cam Coop on the ball. Uh, whip long. And that is it. It's full time and an amazing performance by University of Sheffield wrapped up uh, quite a while ago in this game. And Hallam just, unfortunately for them, not clinical enough. And I think Uniov have got a deserved result here. They've been the better team. They've played with more purpose. They've earned their win. Yeah. And that, you know, that that's going to be p vital points for University of Sheffield in this varsity battle. And... Uh, it's been an amazing afternoon here. I'm, uh, I'm Adam Hume Thomas and my co-commentator Carlos Fellows. I've, uh, it's been a real privilege to pre present this game to you for Forge TV.